What is up y'all, this is Alex from Alex PC Tech again, back at you with another video. And on today's video, I hope you are safe, I hope you are fine, and I hope you are doing well. But for this video, I wanted to share with you or to discuss what would be the two mods that you can do when you are entering or starting out your hobby in the mechanical keyboard realm. Now, these mods are really cheap and are easy to do. And in my opinion, this will really introduce you into the hobby of getting into mechanical keyboards. With that said, we're going to be doing is we're going to do some time lapse of what I did. And along the way, I'm going to share with you some ideas or some tips that I think would be really helpful when doing these mods. With that said, let's proceed with the first mod. So to start it off, you will need a multi-bit screwdriver just to disassemble the keyboard. Okay, so you will need to also have a tweezer because this is the one that I used in order to open the switches. And after that, you will also need a keycaps puller. So this one came with the keychron. In case you don't have, you will need to purchase one in order to do this basic simple mods. And another one would be a switch puller. So this one also came with the Keychron C1. It's nice that they, when I bought it, they have this one. But in case you don't have, you would need these basic tools. Another one is you will need a paintbrush so that you will be able to apply lube inside the switches. And of course, you would need a lube so for this one we use the cryodox 205 g0 shout out to my friend james for providing me with this one and another lube will be the cryodox 105 this is the one that we will be using in the spring so in case you don't know we have a separate video for that and another one is a brush so you could clean any dust that is in the keyboard before proceeding with any mod and for this one first mod is the foam mod so this foam came with the keychron c1 and we're gonna be putting that inside so i'm gonna speed up the video now and before doing anything i did took a picture of the keyboard so that i can return the keys back without any problems as that would be my reference and as you can see Removing the keycaps is really fun and it's easy. And then we had some dust so I used the brush in order to remove some dust inside. And after that we are now going to proceed with removing the switches. So for the switches, the difficulty that I've encountered is pulling some of the switches as some of them are quite tight. I think it's because it's a new keyboard and yeah, I need to apply a little bit of force, not too much, a little bit of force in order to pull them out. Now that we've pulled out all the switches, we will proceed with disassembling or opening the top mount or the top cover of the keyboard. So this is relatively easy as the top mount has two parts. One is the top mount, which is an aluminum top mount, and another one is a plastic mount, as you can see here. Yes, so it came out easily as it's just clipped. And the next one is the aluminum mount. So yeah and after that we will remove the board as you can see if you have any idea what board is this comment down in the section below and for this one we're gonna now apply the foam so the what the foam does is that it removes the reverb or the sound resonating from the hollow inside of the keyboard this will not do that much but it does change the sound a little bit as you can see what i'm doing now is just i'm just applying or aligning the foam
So as you can see, what I'm doing right now is I'm aligning the foam by using the screw lodgements, okay? And I'm going to cut it afterwards, the excess foam after I've aligned my foam properly. What the foam does is that it removes the reverb or the sound that is resonating inside the hollow part of the keyboard. So if you do that, then your keyboard will sound a little bit quieter, I guess. But for this one, yes, it did make a sound difference when in compared to where I didn't do any foam mods in the keyboard. After that, we need to put everything back, hold the board into place, make sure that everything is aligned, and then after that, put in the top mount and the top cover of the keyboard so that we can proceed with the switches. We are going to proceed with lubing the switches. Now, lubing the switches is actually a tedious job, to be honest. But I managed to do so after like a week. But like every day, I spent only 30 minutes. Or some days, I spent one hour. Some days, I don't lube. So it depends. But uh, in, my in my opinion, it will take you around uh, three or two and a half hours to lube everything up properly, especially for this TKL keyboard. So in case you don't have any idea on how to lube your switches, we have a separate video for that one. I'll put a link down below or click on the card above. And after that, we will proceed with putting in or inserting the lubed switches on the keyboard. Now, the main challenge that I encountered with this one is some of the pins, when I press them down, they become or they bend because they're not shooting properly on the slot because on the board there are slots on where the pin should go the problem is some of them i when i apply force when it doesn't want to come in i bent i accidentally bent the pins inside so if i were you don't use excessive force they just they should easily just slot in and avoid bending the pins as those are the contacts for the switch and for the board so you have to be quite a bit careful when doing this step in modding your keyboard in returning the switches and reslotting them and yeah after that this is one of the fun part it's really good that we took a photo of the keyboard before we disassembled everything as we can easily backtrack where the keys are so uh, yeah, you need to be careful or else you will repeat the entire row if you have one letter that you mistakenly put.
I think it would be really helpful if you put like reference keys and make sure those are correct before slotting everything up because yeah I made a couple of mistakes here in the numpad and on the third row and I had to redo the entire row. So yeah, our lube keyboard and modified keyboard is now done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some a little sound test for the stream, but we'll do an official sound test with this one. But for now, here is how it sounds when we type on it. Ah. Oh. Oh, it sounds so good. That is it for this video. I hope you like our presentation for today. Like if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And there is actually a sound test of the Keychron C1 from Lubed and Unlubed that I've uploaded on the channel. So you better check that out if you want to compare those two. And with that said, see you on the next video. Stay safe.